Today on Judge Faith, accusations and denial of fraud abound. She was telling me that the transmission was going out, the fuel pump was going out, and she wanted her money back. But I told her, you know, I'm not, I, you know, you bought the car as is. Carfax report said that it had 215,321 miles. And how much did he advertise? He ad he not only did he advertise it, the odometer clearly says 158,000 miles. There are people who hustle, and then there are people who are hustlers. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor, and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now, she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real, and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Kiana Guy is accusing her former friend of odometer fraud and is suing for a refund on a truck she bought from him. She is accompanied in court by her friend Dan Bryant. Defendant Travis Reineck denies committing fraud and is countersuing for defamation of character. Remain seated and come to order. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, this case is Guy versus Ryan. Thank you, Barbara. Okay, Ms. Keona Guy, yes. you are suing the defendant Travis Reinick yes. for $6,000 for the cost of a truck you say you purchased from him? I am. And, sir, you have a countersuit for $1,000 for defamation of character? Yes. Okay, so we'll start with you, Ms. Guy. All right, well, uh, the defendant and I uh, first met in high school. Um, we weren't the best of friends, but um, we lived in the same area. A couple years later, we ended up being Facebook friends. Um, I noticed that Travis was selling cars online, um, and I needed one. So I contact Travis uh, to see if he had any trucks that he could sell me specifically. He noted that he had two trucks that we could set up a time for me to come take a look at. Beginning of April, um, we met up. He showed me the trucks. I decided I was going to purchase a 2001 Denali that he had. Now, does he have a dealership, or did you just meet him somewhere and he drove the truck I to you? I met him at his apartment. Um, so, we met up. I took the car for a test drive. I looked at the odometer, made sure everything was, you know, in good working condition. Did you take it to a mechanic? I did not. Okay. So, um, I ended up giving him $4,200 that day. He wanted $6,000 for the truck. I felt like that was a good deal since the odometer read 158,000 miles. So I'm like, okay, $6,000 for a car with this, you know, low amount of miles would be, you know, that's a good deal, is what I'm thinking. Not that I know much about cars. So we, he goes ahead up and uh, types the agreement. May I see that? Yes, you may. So the two of you signed an agreement. We you purchased an the agreement, vehicle. agreement um, stating <clears throat> that I would give Thank him $4,200 on that day and that I would pay $300 every 15th of the month until it was paid off. Okay, so that's in April That was of in April. 2014. Yes. Okay, so, so May, when is the I'm first sorry. time you realize that there is an issue with the, with, the, okay. with, the, with the odometer? So, okay, like I said, we're friends on Facebook. There's a mutual friend of ours that was, like, bashing him. Like, if you ever bought a car from Mr. Reinick, that you should probably... Get a Carfax report because they're setting the odometers back so that they can sell them for more. When did you see that? This was the beginning of June. So it had been a couple of months. Yeah, it had been a, a couple months. months. I had made two payments already. So that... let me ask you, do you sell cars for a living? Uh, well, really, I have a friend that owns a car lot. I, you know, help him find people, you know, and she wanted a vehicle. I just played the middleman. So you're like her... the middleman broker? Kind of, yep. So your friend has a dealership. Yep. You post ads on Facebook or Craigslist to sell um, the cars? I post them on Facebook or Craigslist. So who gets the money? What's like, what's your, what's your cut? In the, the uh, she was about 10%. 10%? All right. So when she contacts you and tells you that there's a problem with the odometer and that she's heard this, this, this rumor, what happened? When she contacted me about that, she didn't, she didn't say that. There was a post on Facebook. She's told me that she got a car fax. I told her, if you got a Carfax, bring it to me, let me see it. Which I Which have. she never did. You said you showed him the Carfax report? I absolutely did. When? This was the, about, a, about two days after I told him. So the 7th is when I got the report, the 9th is when I told him about it. 
What did the Carfax report say about the, the Carfax? The Carfax report said that it had 215,321 miles. And how much did he advertise it he for adver Not only did he advertise it, the odometer clearly says 158,000 miles. Okay, can I see the Carfax report? Sure. Have you seen the Carfax report? No. You've never seen I it to this day. Seen That's the your Carfax testimony. Carfax report. Okay, well, why don't you take a look at and it? And that vehicle, <laughs> that vehicle was bought from a personal buy. I don't know, we don't know if the person that we got it from did something with the odometer, if the, the odometer went out. I mean, it's an old vehicle, you know. But they, they, they made you aware of this issue, right? No. So you're saying No, today... she did. She okay. told me about that she got a Carfax, but she never showed it to me. Um, early July is the next time I really heard from her. She was telling me that the transmission was going out, the fuel pump was going out, and she wanted her money back. But I told her, you know, I'm not, I, you know, you bought the car as is. In the contract, it says as is. Well, that's it's not the, the problem, though, is, yes, people buy cars as is, but the exception to that rule is fraud. If someone exactly. commits car fraud and induces someone to pay a higher price for a car, because, for example, they say the mileage is lower than what it really is, that's fraud and misrepresentation. Exactly. And so exactly. let me just look at this. We wouldn't have is. nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. I also have Facebook messages with him. He never said that, he never denied that the mileage was f fraudulent. When we talked, it was like, okay, I won't leave you hanging. I understand what's going on. I understand your problem. And we're gonna get this worked out. So and why I did no you reason... say that to her in the messages? That, you, we that were, you wanted to work it out with her? Because we were good, you know, I mean, not, you know, decent friends. We knew each other and all that. So I told her to bring me the car facts to show me what you're talking about because I had no clue of it. So in early July, she called me back complaining about some other stuff going on with the truck. And I told her, you know, if you want your money back, I could sell the vehicle or try to sell the vehicle for you and get you, recoup you some of your money. Coming up on Judge Faith, odometer lessons learned. When I see odometer, there is a number there, 162,000 miles. Right. And right under where it says 162, it says AMU, actual miles unknown. Plaintiff Kiana Guy is suing for a refund on a truck. Defendant Travis Rynek says sorry, he sold the truck as is. Well, he ends up getting the, the, the vehicle back, but you two have very different stories as okay. to how he got it back. Exactly. And who's your witness, by the this way? This is my boyfriend. Okay, what do you have to say about this, sir? You want to step up? Yeah. How did the defendant end up getting this car back into his possession? Okay, so Travis told me, like, if you bring the... I, I told him, I'll get the fuel pump fixed, since that's something that, you know, you don't have anything to do with. I'll get it fixed, bring the truck to you, and you can give me my money. So this day that I bring the truck, is supposed to be the day that he's giving me the money and I'm giving him the keys, the title, and the truck. That never happened. When I get there... Were you there? Yes. Okay, go ahead. When I get there, he tells me, oh, I don't have the money right now. I want to try to sell it or one of my other cars yeah. on Craigslist so that I can pay you. I'm like, no way. I left the truck in the same parking lot that I bought it from. But I told Correct. him, I'm not leaving the keys and I'm not leaving the title until you give me the money. She gave me when the keys When you give me the, the money, title. I will give, I will release to you the title, she signed. signed over the title Signed over to you. I never signed a title. So if, if you can show she that and over show the me the false signature that you put on there, yes. I'll be glad for you to, to present that in, in court. Do you I have never the title signed the title. No, the title... <laughs> The title was in the in the truck when it was wrecked. Okay, let's we'll get to that in a second. I have so a police I want to understand. So you left the there. car in the lot where you bought it from, yes. and that is your friend's car lot, right? No, that's his house. No, no, My his house, parking yeah. lot, yeah. his house. These cars are at his house, so I don't know where the friend comes in at. I thought that there was a car lot. No. There is people a... where people sold cars. No. So you don't know about another friend at all. All I know is this other guy is whose name that Travis forged on my title. So Hello? when you bought the car, you went to his house. Yes. yes. And he has other cars at his yes, house. Yes, he did. At the time, no. he had about five or six other cars that he was selling as well. I had one vehicle that was mine that I was selling. The that truck that she bought, I went and picked up from the lot and brought it to the house. Okay. So he he had a number of cars. He had at, about at his five house. or six cars for sale in that lot. But how, my question is, how did he end up getting the car Apparently back? he had she another set of keys. Off I me. still have my she set of keys. She dropped it off to me, gave me the keys, gave me the title. Oh, the fuel pump still was not working. She tried to start it when they got there. It would not start. I had a mechanic come and fix the fuel pump 
for $280 out of my pocket so I could try to resell the And vehicle. how much had you paid at the time when you left the truck at his house? $4,800. And what was your purpose of leaving the truck at his house on because that day? Because I had got a ride there. The per When I got the ride, it was me and him. I'm, that was the specific reason for me to come and drop the truck off. But when he didn't have the money, it's like I couldn't drive it back because, like he said, it wouldn't start. Do you have anything to add to this? Yeah, a lot. I love that Travis, <laughs> okay. Travis is a shady guy, shady car salesman. He has nothing. He never he, gave he, her any receipts that she, any time that she paid. Where's the receipts? If you're a businessman, you're supposed to have the receipts. He kept sending me off. Every time I made, well, the two times that I made the $300 payments, he's like, because we, we'll meet up somewhere publicly, like Walgreens, Cub Foods, or something like that. And he's like, um, well, I don't so have my receipts. even with though me. you say there's someone else, this third person who has this car lot and Imagine these cars, it. she's making all of these payments directly to you um, every time she's supposed to pay. Yep. And I'm she bought the car man. from no your receipts. house. Yeah. Okay. How did you end up? You, you wrote about having a car accident in the truck. How did that right. happen? He stole the car from my house. Is what, what he happened? Did. How did the car get back to your house? Because I came and got it. Once I kept trying, okay, I left it there, like I said. Once I kept trying to get in contact with him and I was not successful, I came and got the car back. Yes, I did. I had my guy come and tow the car back to my residence. How did you end up getting the car in an accident? Uh, the day drunk. of the accident, someone had contacted me from Craigslist, said that they wanted to look at the vehicle. I had a friend of mine drive the car to Uptown to meet the person that wanted to buy it. They ended up not buying I'm it. I'm sorry, let's back up a second. You posted another ad on Craigslist. I to posted sell an the ad on, the, on Craigslist the day after they brought it to me. Do you me. have that, a copy of that ad with you? Uh, yes, yeah, she do. Did. You, let, me, let me see it, please. <laughs> there you are. And I also have a text message from him of him asking me for pictures of the car so that he could put it on Craigslist. I'm thinking okay, so you can Did try you to run fix a it. Carfax report before you posted this? This there was ad? never, no, she says she No, had I'm asking you, did you no, run one? Okay, so after you were told by the plaintiffs that the actual mileage on the car was 215,000 miles, right. you didn't care to check he put it back and on see what, the what the real mileage was I before did. you all posted it for sale was, again? All I did was put on there that actual miles are unknown. No, that's not what you have on here, sir. Exactly. You have the A miles as odometer 162,000 right miles. Right under, exactly. right under. And right this is under after he it saw says the report. AMU. I am telling you what I'm reading in your ad for the car, and it says odometer. Do we have the ad? Let's pull it up, please. This ad is dated July 24th, 2014. And right under where it says 162, it says AMU. Actual miles unknown. But you have <laughs> in the odometer. See, if you don't know any. Who knows what AMU means? Nobody. People it's don't know what, of, I I know what that means. I don't, I wouldn't know what that meant. When I see know. odometer, when call, when I see a number. No, it. let me finish. When I see odometer, there is a number there, 162,000 miles. Right. You understand? Okay. So you didn't bother after they told you that they have a Carfax report that says the car has 215,000 miles on it in actuality, you're going to resell the car one of two things is happening here. Either you know what the real mileage is on the car and you were involved from the very beginning exactly. in the miles not being accurate on the ad that you put on Craigslist, or you just don't care. Next on Judge Faith, the truck takes a dip in a pond. How'd you what? get in the pond? I don't know, I woke <laughs> up in the pond. I don't know. Of course he doesn't Where know because he's driving under the influence. In the pond. The truck Driver's was in the pond. Yes, Where was your I friend? I climbed out, the, he, he dipped. Dip in the pond? No, he he <laughs> left. He left. Plaintiff Kiana Guy is suing for a refund on a truck. Defendant Travis Rynek says sorry. He sold the truck as is. Truck. Tell me how the, the truck got pond. into the pond. Uh, <laughs> he was drunk. After we brought the car, or brought the truck to the person that wanted to buy it, he Who's said, "Who's we?" Uh, a friend of mine drove it for me. Okay, why why aren't you driving? I didn't have a license at that time. Okay. <laughs> Travis was driving and the I car. Had, he actually got arrested in the car. How did he get in the, the pond? pond? What happened? I was not driving. Uh, we met like around 8.30 p.m. in Uptown area. The guy, you know, checked it out for about 30 minutes. He said, you know, he didn't bring the money on him. He wanted to come get it on Friday. We ended up, me and my friend ended up staying in the Uptown area. <laughs> All the clubs and bars stayed open till 4 a.m. He ended up leaving with his girlfriend. 
and I stayed with my friends and someone that said they stayed in my area where I lived offered to drive my vehicle or I asked him if he'll drive my vehicle. My truck. My vehicle <laughs> to my house and then he would take a cab from there. W were you drinking that night? Yes. How much did you have to drink? A few drinks. What's a few? Three. How'd what? you get in the pond? I don't know. I woke up <laughs> in the pond. I don't know. Of course he doesn't Where know because he truck? was driving under the influence. In the pond. The truck Private was in the pond. Yes. Where was your friend? I climbed out the, he, he dipped. <laughs> oh, God. Dipped in the pond? No, he, he, <laughs> left, he left me. When I woke up, I was in the pond by myself. I climbed out the window, swam through the pond. They had to rescue him out of the Got, pond because no, he they was didn't. drunk. Let me see the photo no, of the didn't. truck in the pond. Yep. No, they didn't. There and you're was, saying uh, that this friend, when the police got there, was magically just gone? He was gone, yes. What's his name? <laughs> Last name? I don't know. <laughs> what happened to him? Full of lies. He's I don't lying. Know. Full of it. You've never spoken to <laughs> again from not that after. moment to I this day? I have not seen him. I, I never, like, had his number or anything like that. He does I've, not exist. I've seen him around. You, um, you, you, so you like... told the police that you weren't driving, your friend was driving. Right. And they didn't believe you, right? They didn't, I have the they didn't arrest me. They didn't charge me with DWI. None of that. They brought me to the hospital and released me. Sir, yeah, I have a paperwork from. The, let me see the police report, please. Let me see. Because what happens is so when you oh, know yeah. that is. this is the police report, and this is also the property receipt showing that he was okay. arrested, and they had to rescue him out of the pond. They did not rescue me. They out rescued of the him, pond. and they had to pull the car out with this huge crane, which they're trying to charge me for because it was my car. They also wanted to seize the car because this is his third DUI. And since he lied to them and you told them that the car DUIs? was his... I do. Okay, how many? Two. Three. So that makes... It makes sense now, because I always find it hospital. incredibly oh convenient God. when people who know that they've been drinking, right, you can't deny that you were drunk that night. Right. But you, but you can deny that you were driving because no one else is there to put you behind the wheel because you're already outside of the car. In every one of those cases, I'm telling you right now, the excuse always is, I wasn't driving. It wasn't me. <laughs> and there is a mysterious, fictitious person driving. out there <laughs> who magically disappears right out there from the scene and no one, no one can give an accounting as to that person being in the car. I have yeah. nothing to do with that. So. How did you find out that the that the car had been in an accident, that the defendant the had an accident The police called me, because I, first of all, I reported the car stolen. Four. So about four days later, the patrol calls me, and they told me, we, we found your truck. Unfortunately, it was submerged in a pond, and that they pulled a guy out, took him to the hospital, and arrested him for DWI. And they also told me that they had to save him, because he, he was also in the pond. And now, Judge Faith rules. Okay, I've had an opportunity now to review a document from the Minnesota State Patrol Department of Public Safety. You testified, sir, and you told me that you were not arrested, you were not charged with anything, there was no DUI related to that incident. And on the date of this accident, you actually came back into the patrol office with a friend of yours to try to pick up the vehicle because they seized it for forfeiture for the, and I'm quoting, first degree DWI event cited above. Exactly. They said they did not ask you any questions regarding the criminal case as you already had been read your Miranda and declined to speak to law enforcement. You're the person, you sold them a car, but you're not really the seller. You're not really the person who has the lot, right? You don't drive the car. You were in an accident, but I wasn't really the driver. My friend was driving, and yet no one knows who this friend is. The odometer on the car is clearly wrong, but I didn't do it. Someone else must have done it before I got the car. There are people who hustle, and then there are people who are hustlers. You are a hustler. Yes. You understand? Yeah. Yes, you are. Not at all. What's your counterclaim about? Uh, she was telling people that I was, you know, rigging vehicles and all that stuff. That's not true. I did not do that. So. Right. Ridiculous. Never did you that. You sound ridiculous. I never did that. Your counterclaim was dismissed, by the way. <laughs> What's the total price you paid for the car? I paid $4,800 for the car. Judgment for the plaintiff in the amount of $4,800, give her her money back.